Testing. We're good. <laughs> We're good. We're good. Ready? Yes. Well, this won't take three minutes. I do have three things that I like to uh, touch upon. Number one is that the um, I noticed in Modesto that the police department had a no panhandling ordinance, and I just wanted to check and see if we can do something regarding that. Uh, here, the public. Uh, uh, input about that for having a no handling ordinance for the whole entire city. That's number one. Uh, number two, you mentioned the the lighting uh, that's going to be happening, and, and I'm really looking forward to District 2, particularly my own neighborhood, because we all say that all politics is local, dog poop, and, and garbage ideas. I'd like to see our area paved <laughs> as quickly as possible, um, see some equity in that across the city. Third thing is, um, and this is the billboards at the boundaries. I know that there are certain ordinances that refer to the size and the height of those billboards. I'm looking at the content at the boundaries of our city where there are all kinds of alcohol signs in the different areas of our city. And I'd like to see some, you know, if the city could put out uh, information on the promoters of those signs so that we could give some feedback if we wish pro or con either way that uh, regarding what you see on those signs the content of, and I don't want to affect anyone's constitutional rights for for freedom of speech but I do like I like to go to a city that is promoting positive and great things so those are the three things I have to say appreciate the opportunity to do it Uh, we do have boards with aggressive hand handling, mm -hmm. aggressive, uh, but it's not for you know the individual who may be. Excuse me, can you hear me? No. Stand up, please. I'll stand up for it. I'll even come out front. How's that? We do have an ordinance for aggressive hand handling. So for those individuals who are uh, you know, blocking you or acting aggressively towards you uh, using fear or some type of force, obviously, to uh, ask you for money. Um, but for those individuals who happen to be just, you know, down on the luck and unfortunate and are requesting money, uh, we typically get calls for that. Uh, we'll go out and address, but um, our ordinance is uh, strictly for the aggressive. Thank you.
It's on. It's on. Okay, and then later in the year, the um, engineering department will be doing the street ceiling and the um, roadway uh, reconstruction projects. So your area is going to get lots of attention this summer and fall. Um, I'll it's on? Okay, yeah. sorry. Um, regarding billboards, are you talking about billboards? I would like to get some more information from you about where those signs are located. I'll look into it and get back to you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll look into it and see where exactly they are. And if you want to see the streets that will be repaved this uh, summer, they're back in the back there. thank the people that I talked to already about a home um, on Breed Avenue in San Leandro that is um, unsuitable for a residential area and the things that are going on there I've reported to our police department to Karina Lopez's assistant Caroline and now the mayor knows and we're hoping to get something taken care of some issues that um, it, it's it's um, multiple two property homes on one piece of property and multiple people are living there and they're I understand paying for three days and staying for three days and there have been a lot of 911 calls and so I'm, I'm glad to see Lieutenant Molitari call me back and I guess they're working on it, so I'm thanking you for that and to hope we can do more to get this possibly taken care of. It's uh, quite dangerous and uncomfortable what's going on. So thank you. Thank you. Mm. I want to thank you very much for bringing the matter to my attention. I have forwarded it on to the chief as it is, um, I think, an issue that would be appropriate for his department to handle. But that being said, um, you know, without people like yourself, you know, bringing issues to our attention and being the eyes and ears of the neighborhood, um, we wouldn't have a quality of life that we, we do enjoy. Um, so I want to thank you for stepping forward because I know based on your information it was hard for you to do and so the community policing effort that you're a part of and that we are all a part of is, in, is imperative and important to the success of this community so thank you very much and I'll continue to work with you. Um, you didn't leave your email so, I, so I'll get your email later on today and if so if you could maybe fill out one of these cards so I can be able to actually um, respond to you. Uh, directly, and then we can follow up. We can follow through on the issue. Okay. And just so you're aware, uh, my staff is aware. Um, our operations captain, Luis Torres, is back there. He's aware as well. And Lieutenant Military, is, he's passed that down to Lieutenant Military. The beat officers are aware of the uh, uh, the residents in question, and those are the quality of life issues and that we care deeply about. Uh, that what's, this is what makes our community great, is that we do have people like yourselves, people in this room that have come forward that will address these problems so that we can work in partnership together. Because like uh, Council Member Lobo says, you guys are the eyes and ears for us sometimes. Um, unfortunately, we can't be everywhere all the time. I wish we could, uh, but that's not the case. But what we can do is rely on good information from you and then use our skill sets to help combat this problem. So uh, we're aware of that, and um, again, we'll keep you updated on, uh, on some of the things you do. And if you don't see us, that doesn't mean we're not doing anything. Because mm -hmm. we have people who specialize in that kind of stuff. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Very nice. yeah, my name is uh, Dan Murray. I live at 1562 141st Avenue. Uh, my question is to Mayor Cutter. Uh, in the opinion section of our local newspaper, I read some disturbing things. And 
I like to hear things from the horse's mouth. Is, is They say that you hired your daughter. Uh, that's against the city charter. I was wondering if the city attorney advised you on the subject. And also, I understand that it's a misdemeanor. And I was wondering if there's any consequences. So thank you. Thank you for your Thank you for your question. Um, your concern is understood. Uh, San Leandro is what's called a city council, city manager form of government. The mayor and city council hire two people. That's the city attorney and that's the city manager. The city attorney advises on legal matters and the city manager handles personnel matters, including hiring. So the mayor does not hire people without the council's support. And those two people are myself and the city attorney. As it relates to the hiring of Jessica Cutter, there were no laws broken, no charter violations. What it is is a bad optic. And what I mean by that is we had a situation that was very, very dire in the sense of that our community center is a very important asset to the city. It was a $10 million plus dollar investment in 2010. In 2012, the person that ran that senior center retired. We hired a new person. A new person <coughs> took the job and 18 months later, retired as well. So we had a process in which people applied, they were qualified, and Ms. Cutter was deemed qualified. She was given a conditional offer. The offer was conditioned on meeting all of the criteria, including the city charter. When that didn't happen, to not have a vacancy, I issued a contract for her to work, which was in my purview. And so the mayor had nothing to do with this, and the city attorney was aware of all this as it was happening, and made sure that there wasn't a violation we now have a situation where we've started a new process to hire a permanent person. But Ms. Carter used her skill sets, which had happened, she happened to work for the city since 2002, and was trained and educated in a way that she could do the job. And yet, you know, she's been unfairly um, run through the press in a way that I believe is unfair to her and the mayor, when really the decision was mine. And so I want the public to know that, and the community to know that as well. And as far as anything being done, untoward where there's a misdemeanor or a, a crime that was committed or a law that was broken, uh, run it to the district attorney, run it to the attorney general, run it to the president, uh, you will find that we were within our purview to do this. I was in my purview to do this. But I do understand the optics. And it's unfortunate that the public has been reading headlines and trying to figure out what goes on in between all of this stuff when you know the mayor is not at fault in any way, shape, or form, nor is her daughter. So, uh, if you have any questions about it beyond that, I'm happy to sit in the room and, and talk to the public if need be. So, thank you. I'm Barbara Kyle. Um, I live in the Assumption neighborhood. And I have a, a similar issue I wanted, wanted to talk about to the uh, lady that talked about the nuisance house in her neighborhood because we have one in mine and it's a meth house um, police are very familiar with it on Valida um, and uh, also a place where people crash people with lots of people would be staying there for a few days um, and so we've done a lot of work on it I want to really uh, acknowledge and appreciate the work that um, that Ursula Reed has done to help us with this as well as the city attorney's office and the police department but I think there's a need for a multi-agency strategy to deal with situations like this. Because, um, you know, probably all the cops know about the house that she was talking about, but it takes more than just that. We had a public meeting about this house last October, and at that point the cops had come 65 times to this house. So it's a huge strain on resources, what a waste of money. Everyone knew about it, yet there's nothing in the, in the analytics that the police department puts together that told our city council person that there's this problem house. So, um, so some of it is just how do you identify nuisance houses? And it could be drugs, it could be gambling, prostitution, flop houses. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's sort of in the misdemeanor thing, part of the world, because we've um, passed laws that make this stuff no longer felonies. And it really requires um, a concerted strategy of multiple agencies to deal with it, including a really strong, this is what's really missing, a really strong communications 
liaison to the neighborhood, that, that really needs to be improved. But using the building department strategies, that's what's helping maybe in our situation, um, code enforcement stuff, whether it's a legal strategies, whether we need different ordinances, now that the state has somewhat decriminalized this, whether there's other things that we need to do. I just think this is something that really needs a strategy that doesn't rely on us individuals having to really uh, work so hard to bring it to people's attention and then bug them again and then bug them again. And you know, I know that they're sick of hearing from us. There should, we shouldn't have to do it that way and that we could just be much more effective if there was a more proactive and coordinated strategy for stuff like this. So that's, I don't know if that's a question, it's a, it's a suggestion for something we, we really badly need. Thank you. Well, I agree with you. There does need to be a coordinated effort. Um, and I will say that there has been to an extent, but uh, I worked narcotics for seven, seven and a half years, roughly. And I understand the problem house. Uh, this one was a little unique in the sense that was it was owned. Right. Um, and you're right, we were out there numerous times. Our beat officers still know about that house. Right. Uh, as you know, the house was red tagged, so no one was supposed to be there. But yet, when people that don't have a house and they know that no one's there, where they're going to go? They're going to go back to that house because it's shelter. Mm -hmm. So that's that's. There's a lot of issues, not only with uh, resources for these people to get help, but obviously resources on our end to make sure that not only can we get everybody out of that house, but we don't we do it where we don't violate people's rights. Um, I will agree with you. It does take a coordinated effort to handle some of these these uh, these issues. They are very sensitive, and I will argue that you're not bothering us. Uh, we want to know if the uh, the people in that residence are coming back. I know our. Crime Prevention Officer, Officer Crosby, she, she was spent many times speaking, I don't know if it was you or with uh, the members of the group uh, that have uh, voiced their uh, concerns about that residence. I know Lieutenant Henderson, who, and uh, Sergeant Delgado, and I'm sure most of my staff that is here today is very familiar with that house, but the good thing is, is that we're not gonna give up. We're gonna keep trying, we're gonna try figure, figuring out ways. I know we meet with not only the city attorney's office, but with other departments, whether it be public works, uh, to see what we can do about these community problems, because it is a concern. And enforcement is just one piece of it in terms of the police response. Uh, the mayor and council are going to see an item this coming council meeting that relates to code compliance. And so in the past, what the city of San Leandro has done is relied on people that own the properties, rented the properties, to maintain them to a certain standard. We do not want to see that standard slip. So as a result, we've tried to figure out how to restore some funding to the code compliance so we can abate some of these problems where there's hoarding or there's issues with how they're constructed and not just the crime piece. So what we're going to do is ask the city council for $50,000 more for code compliance acceleration so that we could spend overtime money, we can have abatement money, and we can supplement the effort that the chief spoke about. So uh, we're, we're with you. Uh, community is important in the sense that it be maintained well. And with the drought that just occurred, it gave people, in my mind, some people a license to let the properties go. We want to reverse that, and this is one way to try to do that. Good evening. I want to address something that Pauline, um, Mayor Cutter brought up about the infrastructure, two things. I think it was last year, maybe this year, on Hesperian between Llewellyn and Fairmont, they repaved that area. And I don't know what kind of material that they're using, but it's messed up again. And you know, it's not lasting long, and I'm surprised to hear that East 14 belonged to Caltrans because I called Caltrans almost two months about, I was really complaining about the ultimate pass, right? And so he said that, well, he never returned my call, but one of the staff members said um, they have been working on that for a long time. So I said, well, I recall when I was living in that area 
in 2003, it have always been a problem, and now we in 2016, when are we gonna address that problem? Now on Llewellyn and his burying right there by Walmart, there's a lot of potholes over there. So my question on the potholes is, is there a time frame when the potholes will be repaired? Don't everybody speak at the same time? Well, I'll start off. Uh, I'm gonna uh, send this down to our public works director. Um, there's a lot going on on uh, Hesperia because there's actually two jurisdictions involved, especially at the intersection of Hesperia and Llewellyn. However, uh, we do have a pothole hotline and the Public Works Department does an excellent job of responding to um, pothole requests for filling. Um, it is, you know, it's a challenging location because the county's involved as well, but um, if there is a pothole, we will definitely take care of it right away. just concur with Keith, what Keith indicated. You can either call us, email in whenever you see a pothole. Typically, um, sometimes you take care of it that day. You call first thing in the morning. Otherwise, we can take care of it typically within the uh, two to three days, depending on our ability to get asphalt. San Leandro is a great community, but it does have some issues with its roads and sidewalks. So part of the fix is uh, measure BB from the county, which everyone supported, and now we'll see more resources to do more work and fix potholes and fix streets that need fixing. Uh, another thing that's happening that helps the residents work on this, in the next couple of months, we're going to roll out an application, which is a C-click fix scenario, where if you see a pothole, you can just get it in and we can do the work. With respect to East 14th Street and the state of California owning that, uh, in 2012-13, the mayor, then Mayor Cassidy and Council, worked real hard with Caltrans' staff to pave what you see downtown. And at that point, we requested that they fix the whole thing. And they said they did not have the funds to do it. So we suggested they could provide it, fix it, give it to the city, and then we would maintain it and be responsible for it. They said, look at the cost. And the costs were in the neighborhood of $28 million. So they said, we'll give it to you, but it will be in the condition it's in. And we don't believe that's acceptable. So flash forward to six months ago, the mayor and council, Mayor Cutter in particular, has sent notes to Caltrans to ask them to work on from Bayfair to Durant and really focus on the Bayfair area because that's where it is really, really bad. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll see what their response is. Uh, we want to give the staff a chance to work with us on that as they did in 2013, 14, and paved that nice stretch downtown. So thank you. I have another quick question on the potholes. Is there anywhere where you can go on the website and um, to put in a complaint and send some pictures on the pothole? And the reason why I was asking that, because I was doing some real estate business in Oakland, um, I think it was a couple of months ago, and they had potholes almost everywhere. So um, I called them up and I told them about all the potholes and I put the pictures on my Facebook because they didn't respond in a timely fashion. So I asked them, I said, if I call in, say like in San Leandro, if I call in this particular area and someone have already reported the area, you have a time frame to repair that area. Because I asked them, I said, okay, if someone turned in this pothole, when did they turn it in? Because I don't want to keep repeating myself. They turned it in in 2015, and this is 2016, and the pothole is bigger and bigger and bigger. So can I submit that online? That was my question. Yes, you can. The current system is through San Leandro Assist, but we are going to be, the city's going to be phasing that out. So currently you can submit the uh, request along with pictures online. As city manager indicated, when we get our 311 application up and running, which should be later, late in the summer, that's the one where you can be out with your mobile device, click, and send it in, and that way, that would really be the easiest way. And that application will track if there's duplicates. The current one, um, I don't believe it, it would indicate to you, you know, we already received this request, but you can at least make the request um, online currently. Okay, thank you. So 
So just to let everyone know, if you have something to report to the city today, if you drive out tonight and you see something that you would like to report, you go to the city website and you can go to San Leandro Assist. Or you can email city comments at sanleandro.org. Um, I personally manage that email, so and I do community relations and work with a lot of the departments up here to coordinate some of that work. So you can email city comments at, at sanleandro.org. You can go through assist, and you can find a link to it on the home page on the left-hand side, or you can also call me, 577-3372, until we roll out this whole new way of submitting service requests. We could have had 12 people speak in two to three minutes each. We only had about five. In May of last year, I took a note at a city council meeting that I talked about weeds. We're talking tonight about potholes. Where I live, it seems to be a competition how many weeds we can air blow down our streets so that the neighbors have to do more work. $40,000 is now the, um, I forgot what it's called, uh, the police money reward um, for the person who killed the person in San Leandro. Uh, we haven't heard from our police department how many hours were put in or will be assigned to be put in in the future. I happen not to have gone to the house when it was in San Leandro times that said you could go go there. But I met someone at the San Leandro uh, library he says, oh yeah, I live on that street. I forget the name of the street, but he lives on that street. He's around my age in his 60s, and he says, well, one time we had somebody shot down there, a whole bunch of bullet holes and stuff, but the person survived. Um, I would not support, I don't know how it is um, said, because we've only heard it from the San Leandro Times, but um, if a mayor cannot live off fifty thousand dollars. I'm living off less than seven thousand, and I'm sixty-nine in July. I own my house. I can hardly do property taxes. Now, there's a man who owns seven properties on Bristol Boulevard. I asked a nineteen-year-old today, "Could you mow his lawn?" He's ninety-two. He doesn't live there. It ain't going to happen. That you put fifty thousand dollars. That the graffiti in our life right now is the weeds. And um, we are soon going to have children out of school. When can the police community standards set, okay, one minute, set standards that says certain things have to be done? Like you, as a city, say it's okay to have weeds knee high. But you know what? I pulled for two months across the street while my neighbor or renter picks the backyard when the property manager who's received an award from the city of San Leandro did nothing when he moved in for six months with the yard or afterwards. On Mother's Day, okay, on Mother's Day, uh, I was over the fence in Oakland talking to a lady, trimming her stuff because her tree fell down which was the reason why the man next door cut down the whole pine tree that four months before. We need to coordinate between San Leandro and Oakland on East 14th Street. Order. My name is Kent Thornbury. I've lived in the city of San Leandro for over 40 years. I raised my kids here, and so I'm vested in this community. Uh, I think myself and a lot of my neighbors are concerned of what's going on as far as new construction. All we hear is apartments, apartments, apartments. Uh, we would like to see home ownership. How about some condominiums instead of apartments? It improves your have the home ownership and it improves your area. I remember back many years ago there was a vacant lot on Half Street at 235 Hats the Creekside Apartments. And at that time, the city said it was vacant lot. We're going to put condominiums in there. They didn't. They put in apartments. That upset the neighborhood. In fact, that's why Gary Leffler ran for city council many, many years ago, because the city turned around and put apartments in. And I remember uh, reading in the Times, oh, maybe a year ago, there was talk of turning it into condominiums. And then one of the councilmen said, oh, we can't do that because there's no washer and dryer in the units. 
That's absurd. We need home ownership. And people say, well, if you have home condominiums, they'll rent them out anyway. Not necessarily. That's that's fallacy. And another thing I want to bring up is uh, the parking around Safeway. I can't imagine why anybody put a business in there. You can't find a place to park anymore. I mean, there's going to be a new gym in there and a tap room. I don't know how they're going to survive. There's no parking. You go down, 